What's up guys, I'm Brad Rodriguez from Fix This, Build That. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make this modern side table. Now these angles and miter joints are a little tricky. I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks on how I did the glue up and how you can do it just as easily. Stay tuned, I'll show you exactly how I did it. The side table is made out of solid walnut as I had this huge 4x4 walnut beam just waiting to become a piece of furniture. But I'll have plans available for the build with a cut list using standard 3 quarter inch stock readily available at your home center or lumber store. Check the link below in the description for details. I cut the beam into three pieces, then I flattened one side of each of the pieces on the joiner. Then I rotated the beam 90 degrees and flattened the adjoining face to give me two flat reference surfaces. I took the beams over to the bandsaw and I used the flat surfaces against the fence and the table to resaw the 4x4 into four rough 1x4s. Now the best thing about this is that these four boards will now match perfectly in color and grain too. I used my 1836 drum sander from Jet Woodworking, the sponsor of today's video, to take off the bare minimum I needed to get these boards flat. You could also do this with a planer, but you're going to lose a little bit more material. I ripped the boards to width, and then I cut them to length, and I was ready for the first glue ups. The box of the side table has a continuous miter joint connecting the top and sides. I glued the boards to make these pieces in one large glue up using only glue and clamps. Then I did a smaller glue up that will become the bottom of the box. After the glue was dry, I used a card scraper to get off the dry glue that squeezed out onto the surface during the clamping. And these things are really fun to use, I highly recommend you go grab one. I went back to the jet drum sander to flatten the panels before cutting the miters. The open-ended design lets me run wide panels through that I could never fit through my planer. It gives me a nice even surface, which is key to getting a good miter joint. Using my crosscut sled, I cut the top large panel into three pieces for the top and the sides and squared up one side of the bottom panel. Then I set my blade to 45 degrees and started making the miter cuts on each side of the parts. To cut accurate 45 degree bevels on the table saw, you need one straight reference side on each board. I used that side to ride against the fence and then flip the piece around after cutting the bevel on one side to get the bevel for the other side. If you've cut the miters accurately, the glue up goes pretty easily with the right help. I lined up the boards, then I used tape to hold the alignment of the joints. I flipped the parts over and then I applied a liberal amount of glue to each joint before rolling up the assembly and taping the final joint. Then I raised the box off of the bench and applied pressure to the total assembly with a band clamp and some ratchet straps using scrap boards to keep the metal off of the wood. While the box was drying, I moved on to the base. I decided on a one inch thick leg for the base and used a rough two x six offcut from another project to get it. I used the planer to get my final thickness and I cut the blanks to size, then I put a straight edge on both sides of the boards with the joiner. I used a ruler to lay out oversized blanks for the tapered legs, avoiding the knots and the defects in the boards. I cut the blanks to rough size on the bandsaw and then I took them to the bench for final layout. I laid out the taper of the legs with a reference point on each end of the board. I used these reference marks to line up the board with my simple tapering jig I made over here for my table saw. As long as the marks are lined up with the edge of the jig, then I'll cut an exact taper that I need. I need to upgrade this jig though since the exact repeatability isn't perfect with this setup. The legs are joined to the top stretcher with miter joints. and The splay on the legs is 10 degrees outwards. I got this by cutting 40 degree angles first on the top stretcher and then on the tops of the legs. I first cut the leg a little long and then I snuck up on the exact size with the second cut. You really need to be careful when you're cutting these because when you have two miters coming together on a taper, you can miss the size really quickly with too strong of a cut. After establishing the top angle on all the legs, I lined up my stop block and I made a 10 degree bevel cut on the bottom of each leg so that they'd sit flush on the floor. I decided to use dowel joinery for the base. This was my first time using it. I laid out the legs and the top stretcher and marked where each dowel would go. I also labeled each side of the matching joints to make sure I could keep my parts straight and the joints in the correct orientation. To drill the holes for my dowels, I clamped the leg to my workbench and used a self-centering dowel jig aligned with the layout lines that I had just marked. Then I switched over to the top stretchers and drilled the mating dowel holes on each end using the same technique. To glue up the leg assembly, I put glue in the dowel holes and on the face of each miter, then I inserted the dowels and pushed the parts together by hand. Now to effectively clamp the miter joints together, I cut these two little clamping blocks with a 10 degree angle on them. 
I glued some sandpaper to the angled face of the blocks. This allowed me to just use one parallel clamp to pull everything tightly together and nothing slipped. When the glue was dry, I sanded all the joints flush and added a round over to the edges of the legs as well as to the top while I had the bit in the router. The front and the back of the legs are joined by two angled aprons. I cut the aprons to size and I added a 10 degree bevel on each side and then I took them to the legs to lay out the dowel joinery. I drilled dowel holes in the end of each apron first. I could then use these holes to reference the mating holes on the leg assembly. Now to do this I used these little inserts called dowel points. Pressing the points down firmly makes two indentions in the wood exactly where you need your dowel holes to go. I used these marks to position and drill the holes on the leg assemblies with my drill press. Assembly is pretty straightforward as the dowels line everything up together. I glued the dowels and the joints and then pressed the parts together and then put a couple parallel clamps on the assembly and turned it over to dry. Next I moved to the drawer for the side table. I made the drawer for some leftover 3 quarter inch Baltic birch plywood that I have from some previous projects. I went with a very easily assembly method for this one, using glue and brad nails to tack the drawer together, then I came back and reinforced each joint with two dowels. After the glue had dried on the dowels, I cut the extra length off with a flush trim saw. I cut a piece of quarter inch plywood to the exact size for the bottom and I attached it with glue and brad nails again. I used a chamfer bit on my router to bevel the bottom along the sides of the drawer and this makes the plywood bottom disappear from sight when you view it from the top or the side. For the drawer front, I glued up two small walnut boards and marked and cut them an eighth of an inch shorter than the height and the width of the drawer opening. This will give me a sixteenth of an inch reveal on all sides. Now I wanted a clean look with no hardware on the front of the drawer. I made a handle cutout by establishing 10 degree bevels the width that I wanted the handle to be. Then I came back with a dado stack on the table saw and cleared out all the material between the bevels. I finished up by sanding the handle cutout and rounding over all the edges of the drawer front. Before finishing the top and installing the drawer, I routed a rabbit in the back of the top to accept a flush back piece. I squared the rounded corners with a chisel to make sure it would fit the rectangular quarter inch plywood piece. I moved on to finishing the box next. I finished the inside of the box first, then I turned the box on its back and applied a few coats of oil based polyurethane. I did the same for the base and the drawer front and man this walnut was looking good with the finish on it. When the finish was dry I installed the drawer slide hardware and fit the false drawer front. I used the old card trick method to space the drawer front. I stacked as many cards as I could on the left and the top of the drawer front. Then I split the stacks in half and put the smaller stacks on each side and two at the bottom of the drawer front. I clamped the drawer front into position then I attached it with screws from the inside of the drawer. I mounted the top to the base using figure eight fasteners from below and then I installed the quarter inch back into the rabbit recess that I made earlier and just used some brad nails to secure it. And this project really exceeded my expectations. It was my first shot at a real modern furniture design with some nice hardwoods and I loved how it turned out. I'm really looking forward to making more pieces in this style. I want to give a big shout out to Jet Woodworking for partnering with me on this build. That Jet 1836 drum sander was a huge help on this project when I was trying to flatten that panel. There's a link below in the description. You can go check out all the details about it. If you want to build your own modern side table, there's a link down below in the description for the plans of this build. You can check it out. There's 3D drawings, a cut list, and everything you'll need to build it. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, I'd love to have you as part of the team. And until next time, guys, get out there and build something awesome.